court in Johannesburg has found Bosasa liquidators did not get consent to sell off the company's movable assets and thus acted unlawfully by holding an auction without consulting the board of directors. Now, the court has ordered assets not be moved to the bidders and says legal costs must be paid in one of the three applications. African Global uh, Operations went into provisional liquidation and within a few months the company's assets were sold for around 100 million rand. Let's get the latest on the story now. Joining us is one of the liquidators, Kluta Murray. Uh, Kluta, thanks very much for your time this morning uh, on the AM report. So the contention from Bosasa is that uh, the liquidators, despite two court orders, went ahead with this auction in any event. Give us your side. Yeah, look, you have to understand that the judgment uh, dealt with two issues. The one is the sale, obviously. Um, but more importantly, the judgment came on the back of a business rescue application, which the court dismissed. Um, we have studied the judgment, and we are of the opinion that the judgment contains a number of, of errors in law, mm -hmm. and we will be appealing uh, that judgment to the Supreme Court of Appeal. So what happens in the meantime, uh, because this auction has already, it's already happened, what happens to those movable assets in the meantime? Well, the movable assets, there's a provision in the Insolvency Act, Section 82.8, which says if a bona fide party arrives and buys at such an auction, that sale cannot be set aside. Now, every single person who registered at that auction is a bona fide uh, party in terms of that specific provision. So the judgment doesn't specifically say that, that those parties now have to return the goods. So, so the judgment is, is bizarre in a sense that except for the direction that the judgment should be sent to the master of the high court, it sort of leaves the egg still scrambled. It doesn't uh, try to unscramble the egg. Uh, so it's, it's, it's strange and, and, and bar for the, for the criticism of, on us uh, as liquidators, which is, has no basis in law or fact, uh, the, the judgment doesn't, uh, doesn't advance uh, anybody's interest, uh, neither the, 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 the creditors or for, for the applicant holdings uh, for, that, for that matter. So Jared Watson, the CEO of Bosasa, is now saying, I mean, it's in direct contradiction to what you're saying, Clutter. He says, because of this court order, those sales in effect did not happen because in the first place, the liquidators did not have the authority to go ahead with the sale. Yeah, I, I can't comment on Mr. Watson's knowledge or expertise in the law. Uh, I can only tell you what I think, and, and my, my opinion is that those sales are not unlawful, cannot be set aside in terms of the provisions of Section 82 of the Insolvency Act. Um, the, the, the court does not, in the judgment, the, the court does not find that those, those sales are to be set aside. Mm. They declare that the sales are unlawful, on some construction, which we don't agree with, uh, your, your listeners need to understand that there was a court order authorizing us to sell those assets. Mm -hmm. There was a provision in the order which said it had to be done with the consent of the board of the companies. That were, interim arrangement was in place uh, whilst we were waiting for the Supreme Court of Appeal judgment in the application to set aside the resolutions. As your listeners know, the Supreme Court dismissed uh, 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 the uh, uh, application uh, for, to have those resolutions set aside. And in our opinion, we had the, the requisite uh, authority to dispose of those assets. Mm. I, I mean, you know, you're explaining it to someone who is not an expert in, in your field, uh, as I imagine most of our, our viewers are, as, are, are not as well. But so the, the, the con I just want to understand, the contention is that you needed, as liquidators, you needed the go ahead from the board to go ahead with these sales. Is that correct? That is the, the wording of the order. And, of course, there's a, there's a factual dispute there. What Mr. Watson does not say is the fact that the board members of holdings, right up to the 21st of November 2019, did not include Mr. Watson and his sister, Lindsay Watson. The board members were Joe Gamedi, uh, uh, Lindsay, uh, um, uh, Jackie, 
and, and uh, Papa Lex Labani. Those board members were parties to regular monthly meetings in which these matters were discussed. Uh, at all times, though, those specific individuals agreed with us as the liquidators that these assets need to be sold as soon as possible for a number of reasons, security reasons. Uh, keep in mind that all the contracts of Busasa were cancelled and all the assets were brought to a centralised point in Krugersdorp. Mm -hmm. So there were concerns, and these, were, these concerns were discussed at monthly meetings. Mr. Watson was not present at one single meeting. His sister, Lindsay Watson, was present. And, I mean, the, it's in the record that, the, that the, the sale of the assets were discussed. They agreed. In fact, they pushed the liquidators to bring an urgent application to, to obtain the authority to sell these assets. Mm -hmm. Mr. Watson arrives after the fact, becomes a director of holdings, I think, on the 22nd or the 21st of November 2019, not having attended a single meeting. So, so we contend that to the extent that we required consent, I don't think we did, but to the extent we did require the, uh, the consent, the extent was, consent was given to us at these meetings. The, the, every single minute of those meetings are part of the record. The judge, in his judgment, for some reason, thought to ignore this uh, and also ignored the factual the dynamics of when Mr. Watson became a director. Yeah. It would have been different had Mr. Watson been a director all along and been party to these meetings. Then I would say, well, Mr. Watson was there and he held a different view. But he was not. He did not attend a single meeting between the Board of Holdings and the liquidator. So, Clitter, you're taking the matter up on appeal now. What happens if the court uh, says that the decision it, it already, originally made was the right one? Well, I'm a, I'm a great believer in the law, and, and I, if the Supreme Court of Appeal finds that the judgment of judge, uh, acting Judge de Villiers is correct, then we'll accept that. All right. Well, thanks very much for coming on to the AM report and explaining some of these issues with us. Clitter Murray is a Busasa liquidator. That story is certainly a developing one.